There's a well-known story about Russian President Vladimir Putin and a rat. As Putin describes it in his autobiography, as a child, he chased a rat around his family's apartment building, a ramshackle building. Remember, his parents were very poor. It was right after World War II, and Putin often had to go hungry. Anyway, so while he was chasing this rat, eventually he trapped the rat in front of a corner. The rat then lashed out, attacked the young Putin, and attempted to bite him. The young Putin was so rattled. This experience, in his own words, taught him that if you are cornered, then you have to fight to the finish line in every fight. And you need to assume that there is no retreat. Now, Western officials have often cited this story for how Putin allegedly never backs down and is particularly dangerous when he's cornered. They have done so this time too in the war in Ukraine, with Putin's threats of using tactical nuclear weapons being attributed to his nature of never backing down, and particularly so if he has his back to the wall. But there is a problem in this assumption, and it is exactly that. It is an assumption. On Crux Decode, I explain how, contrary to popular perception, Putin has quite often backed down in the face of adverse circumstances. Now, off late, there have been a lot of comments from Western leaders asking Ukraine to be seen as making concessions to Russia. This in a bid to try and end this war. French President Emmanuel Macron, Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, even the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg have all repeatedly suggested that Europe wants credible negotiations and diplomatic solutions. Macron, in fact, had gone so far as to say that we must not humiliate Russia so that the day when the fighting stops, we can build an exit ramp through diplomatic means. Now, all of this is part of the myth-making that the Russian president has successfully constructed around himself. And this has been consumed lock, stock and barrel by many Western politicians. Now, contrary to the commonly held belief that when faced with strength and resolve, Putin often backs down instead of responding with more escalatory steps. Now, one stark example of this came in November of 2015, when Turkey shot down a Russian Sukhoi-24 fighter jet very close to the Turkey-Syria border. At that time, there were widespread fears that this could escalate into a direct conflict between Russia and Turkey. Instead, Putin's response was rather mild. Moscow imposed some trade sanctions on Turkish imports. It also suspended Russian tour packages to Turkey. And even those small measures were eventually lifted a few months later after Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan sent an apology to the Kremlin. Subsequently, several clashes have happened between Russia and Turkey in various theatres from Libya to Syria to Yemen. And in all these instances, Russia is the one that backed down. Even when it came to chemical weapons attacks in Syria, which was a red line for the then US administration of Barack Obama, Russia had weighed on its friend Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian president, to back down and observe restraint. And of course, the most recent evidence on the ground is in Ukraine, which also goes against this persistence of a perpetually resolute Putin. Now, when realizing the catastrophic failure of his initial ambitious goal of regime change in Ukraine, the Kremlin revised its plans. It adopted a much less ambitious goal instead. Instead of escalating and doubling down, the Kremlin announced a much humbler objective. They wanted to concentrate all their main efforts on liberating the Donbass. Now, that's an easy way to declare victory. You just change your definition of what constitutes victory. Just shift the goalpost and victory is yours. When faced with strong enough resistance, Putin has also backed down in Russian domestic politics, where, of course, his dominance is nearly absolute. The most famous example came in 2005, when Putin attempted to replace benefits like free public transport and subsidies for medicines and housing for senior citizens with monthly cash payments instead. There were mass protests across Russia over this move, Putin then quickly backed down. But the way this war, or any other war that Russia is involved in, directly or indirectly, is set up domestically in Russia in a way that Putin can never lose. 
His tight control of the media means that even when there is adverse public opinion, Putin can always change the polling within weeks. He can make it look more favorable to him. So 45% of polled Russians held positive views of Ukraine back in November of 2021, and 43% had negative views. But by February of this year, just before the war got launched, that ratio had turned on its head. Only 35% held a positive view of Ukraine, and 52% had negative views. The way this is set up in Russia, Putin can hardly lose this war in the eyes of his own population. Therefore, the stakes for the Western countries are that much higher. They need to stop falling for this oft-repeated myth that Putin never backs down in the face of adversity. The evidence on the ground from Turkey to Libya to Syria and even domestically seems to show that Putin knows when circumstances are so adverse that he cannot afford to escalate. Ukraine 2022 may be one such.